Joining me from Charlotte, North Carolina, is Mary C. Curtis. She's a columnist with Roll Call and a host of the podcast Equal Time. Thanks for joining us. Now, McCarthy's deal to get speakership allowed his removal in the first place. Explain how we got here, even in a logistical sense. Well, many would, would say that the seeds were really planted, that this would happen, because nine months ago, pretty much exactly, in order to get the speakership, which he has wanted for quite a while, he had to make deals with every faction, including many of the folks uh, in the more right-wing faction. He had to make promises, one of which that only one person could bring up this motion to vacate. So he's been skating on thin ice for some time. And some would point to the deal to keep the government open that he made with the cooperation of Democrats. But there's other things, the debt ceiling deal, uh, quite a few other things that folks could say that while this is, as you say, unprecedented, it wasn't wildly surprising. Some would say it's a wonder he stayed in this long. And of course, this is a historic vote. Do you think that this is one of the biggest indications yet of a huge fracture within the Republican Party? Definitely. Uh, as the report said, the, re the Democrats have been saying, well, the Republicans are in the majority now in the House, but can they govern? And they will be pointing to this, saying, is it too much chaos? Will they be able to govern? Remember, the deal to keep the government open was short term. That's the first thing that's going to have to be tackled, how to keep the government open in about 40 days. There is a significant amount of anger and distrust from House Democrats toward McCarthy, too, and Democrats indicate they that they wouldn't bail McCarthy out. Why is he such a divisive character, do you think? Well, the, the Republicans and Democrats, the Republicans who ousted him would say they couldn't trust him, and the Democrats would say that, too, because he has demonized them, called them socialists and others, even though they have helped him keep the government running. Uh, also, he made promises such that he would not bring an impeachment inquiry up unless it was brought to the floor for a vote. That didn't happen. And they launched an impeachment inquiry. You could say that Kevin McCarthy was being pushed and pulled by all sides. Uh, the name that's not there, of course, is Trump, who is still the leader of the Republican Party, the front runner for the nomination. And he was pushing as well on things like impeachment. So he was in a difficult position, Kevin McCarthy, but he did alienate it seemingly all sides. So who do the MAGA Republicans like it want instead? Well, that's interesting. I just heard that McCarthy, although he could run again, is not interested, and who could blame him. Now, uh, temporarily pro tem, it's Patrick McHenry of North Carolina, who's pretty much on the right. Uh, but some say that there's some names floated. Steve Scalise, who's the uh, whip, who is num who's next in line from Louisiana. He is battling cancer, but others have said that they like him. Uh, Tom Emmer of Minnesota is some another name that has been floated. So uh, I think even though it's been precarious for Republicans, because we've seen folks like John Boehner and Paul Ryan, former speakers, uh, having been pushed out, it's a powerful position. So they'll be aligned. So how does it look from here on in, then? What's the process, the next steps? Will the House remain in chaos until they have another speaker? Well, apparently now the, the Republicans are meeting behind closed doors, uh, the caucus, to see if there's someone that they can agree on, because it is to their advantage to show they can govern. Particularly upset, I would say, are the Republicans who won in districts that Joe Biden won as president. So for them, the voters want to see someone who would be more moderate, who would be able to cooperate across the aisle. Uh, and that remains to be seen. All right, we'll leave it there. Mary C. Curtis, thank you. Columnist with Roll Call.